Many weeks ago, I started a new series known as Sailor Moon, in which in my opinion is heavily downplayed and dare I say misconstrued in terms of power. Because of this, I decided to put the main character herself against someone like Goku to really show off her power. However, even though I thought it was pretty blatant who would win between the two, many people in the comments got incredibly angry. I mean, I thought it was pretty obvious that I was lowballing and downplaying both Sailor Moon and Goku to give a perspective on who would win if they weren't downplayed. I mean, Dragon Ball has numerous higher dimensional statements and realms within it, and Sailor Moon has a whole 60 chapter series while I only used 14. However, without further ado, let's see who would truly win between Goku and Sailor Moon, honestly. First and foremost, as I said in the previous video, using things like the Koyama statements which I personally won't be using are massively inconsistent and unreliable. Koyama has stated on numerous occasions that his statements on the series are more so just personal feelings and opinions and have no real bearing on where or how the verse is scaled and has no real significance to the story whatsoever. Many people will try and argue that Koyama is just saying this in reference to the manga since he refers to the original material, however, this wouldn't be the case as he directly alludes to and even asserts that Toriyama is of a higher authority than he is when it comes to the overarching material, that being the Dragon Ball franchise. So any claim that this is only in reference to the manga wouldn't be true. Furthermore, any sort of headcanon or excuse of Koyama being threatened online has never been proven to be true even on his own Twitter, which is where most of if not all of these unreliable statements are from. So I think with that clarification, we can now actually go ahead and see where Goku scales at least consistently. As I said in the previous Goku vs Sailor Moon video I made, Goku and Beerus using their god key are capable of destroying the entirety of the Dragon Ball macrocosm. This macrocosm is home to many infinitely sized space-time continuas and even higher dimensional realms such as heaven, which I'll get into. In the guides, the universe, which would be mainly in reference to the world of the living, is stated to be infinitely expansive and to have innumerable stars and galaxies within it, and heaven is stated to be parallel to this and is an infinitely sized realm. Heaven in the guides, and moreover the Daijenshu, is stated to be a higher dimensional space many times over, with the guides that were directly written by Toriyama personally, stating that Otherworld, or Heaven, is to encompass another level or higher level of reality, and even with the Daijenshu saying that it's a realm humans can't even fathom or perceive, which would quite literally imply 5th dimensional levels of power or existence. Since we would just logically assume that the living realm is 4D, and Goku and Beerus were going to destroy the entirety of the macrocosm, including heaven that transcends the living realm, in just 3 punches. Goku then absorbs his power to destroy and annihilate the universe 7 macrocosm and should comfortably be around the 6 dimensional levels pretty easily. From here, I'll get things like Tempest, you're contradicting yourself. However, I'm not, as like I said, I was downplaying both Goku and Taylor Mood for the sake of a fair fight. Anyway, Goku would then get millions of times stronger with things like absorbing the god key as I said and attaining many new godly transformations such as the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan Blue or his main and most popular form, Mastered Ultra Instinct. Many chapters after Goku's initial fight against Beerus, Goku would participate in a multiversal tournament known as the Tournament of Power. During this tournament, Goku would face off against a character known as Jiren. Jiren on many occasions is stated to have power that transcends the gods of destruction, at least in the anime, which would include the aforementioned Beerus, at least again going by the anime's continuity. This would mean that Jiren inherently scales above not only Beerus, but any prior version or iteration of Goku that was able to clash with Beerus and almost blow up the entirety of the universe of macrocosm, which again has at least two infinitely sized 4th dimensional realms and even a 5th dimensional realm in the form of the afterlife. Due to this, Jiren would basically smack up every version of Goku up to his mastered Ultra Instinct form that was actually weakened due to the numerous battles Goku had against Jiren, Topo, Kefla, and many more. Meaning, the Goku we see fight Jiren isn't even his hypothetical peak due to how exhausted he is during the fight. Meaning the 5th to 6th D Goku would practically be pretty concrete by this point, however it gets even crazier. 
During the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, Gogeta and Broly during their fight were able to break apart super dimensional spaces that are again a part of and even beyond the aforementioned macrocosm. Super dimensional, at least in Japanese linguistics and semantics, usually refer to a higher dimensional space or something that is beyond the order or scope of dimensions. The reason many scalars such as myself use the former rather than the latter is because the former upon more context is in reference to Goku and Broly distorting and transcending all time in space in the macrocosm, with the directors even changing the animation style to blatantly portray this. So, if you really want to wank, then Goku would be 7th dimensional. If you think the Broly movie's promotional poster is axiomatic in what it says, that being that Broly is the strongest enemy, which would eclipse things like Jiren, Beerus, and many others that have came before him. However, I would personally choose the 6th dimensional scaling more consistently, as Broly is potentially above Beerus, stated by Goku himself, and Jiren would simply be above Beerus and the entirety of the Gods of Destruction themselves by virtue of the many guide statements. There's also many Dragon Ball misconceptions such as Jiren transcending time, however, not in reference to the dimensional scaling as we've already established that he does via things like Broly and beating up a Goku who is millions of times stronger than the one that fought Beerus earlier and is now stated to transcend that Beerus but it is in reference to when Jiren is able to flex out of his time skip or time stop, when this is solely due to the mechanics of the verse, which we also won't grant to this versus battle as obviously, like I said in the earlier video, Sailor Moon isn't a Dragon Ball character, and that's overall just a boring solution to a versus battle. So Jiren and by extension Goku are bound by time, at least in reference to speed, and this is shown countless times regardless of any of the edgy afterlife arguments that blatantly contradict themselves many fans of the series try to use, or many of the blatant and misconstrued hit time skip arguments that are really convoluted and conflated. Now that we've gotten the misconceptions and wink outliers out the way, we can now go over Goku's main set of abilities and where he consistently scales in terms of speed. Goku's main set of abilities are things like the Super Saiyan transformations, Kaioken, and things like the Mothaba Jar of Sealing, which if I'm being honest, will have absolutely no use to Goku in this specific versus battle, but of course, I'll get into that when I go over how strong Sailor Moon truly is. However, something I forgot to mention in the last video, at least extensively, is the Hakuna. Kai. The Hakai is a god key ability that allows you to basically erase things from existence, which Goku has also been shown to resist. But the main crutch of Goku's abilities has to do with his Master Ultra Instinct form, specifically the one that we see in the manga as that version of NUI is implied to be a more refined version compared to the one we see in the Tournament of Power in Goku's fight against Jiren. However, this doesn't necessarily matter as in the manga, Beerus is somehow top dog and a benchmark to where Goku and the rest of the gang should be by the time the series ends, but in the anime, he's long been surpassed since the introduction of Jiren. Mastered Ultra Instinct is defined as autonomous self-movement that allows Goku to have some sort of sixth sense precognition using his god key to formulate almost perfect counterattacks and combos to subdue and overpower his opponents. Goku, if he truly wanted to, could combine Ultra Instinct, not to be confused with Master Ultra Instinct, with another technique such as the Kaioken or Super Saiyan Blue and tap into that autonomous movement aspect of Ultra Instinct in conjunction with the power of Super Saiyan Blue, since of course that version of it is in a form. However, Master Ultra Instinct would be a form and a technique since he blatantly gets stronger and they literally have the silver hair as an indication of that. Also, for those who still disagree with Goku being this strong, we are blatantly told in the Broly movie that Gogeta and Broly, as I said, were able to nuke the mentions and Broly is potentially above Beerus, while Jiren was stated to blatantly surpass him and Goku would beat up Jiren many times after those statements were made. When it comes to speed, I won't waste anyone's time with the repetitive massively fast and light arguments for Dragon Ball, as I think massively fast and light is just a clear and generally accepted baseline for how fast these characters generally should be. However, Goku and the rest of the high tiers in my opinion kind of blatantly scale to those infinite speeds and potentially higher, with Goku in the manga 
mistaking granola's base speed for instant transmission and we have things like goku in the z movies blatantly scaling to it as well as i said prior goku was able to shake the world of void that is infinite in size it's been emphasized many times that ki is relative to your physical stats so goku by virtue of that should have infinite speeds to amp his speed infinitely as well one thing I also forgot to mention is that Dragon Ball also confirms its knowledge of space and time is predicated upon our knowledge of interstellar mathematical dimensions such as space and time, with Toriyama even calling the entirety of the macrocosm a cosmos in reference to non-Western language. If we take this into consideration, which we know by virtue of the way he describes the macrocosm, it would quite literally have to be higher than 4D and like I said 5D. And since Goku is capable of destroying it, he would be 6D. But like I said, I just wanted to make that known and practically confirm it with almost irrefutable evidence. In conclusion, characters like Demon King Piccolo are planetary with a bit of wank. Characters like Frieza are able to destroy Namek and planet Sadala, which is the planet the Saiyans inhabit that are of a greater magnitude in terms of size and power. Goku then gets 50 times stronger than Frieza's strongest form and is able to one-shot him. Cell, while not even at full power, is able to blow away the solar system, and a Team Gohan with Super Saiyan 2, who is millions of times weaker than an end of Z Goku, who is able to beat his ass. Boo is then introduced, and is just shown to be the strongest adversary they faced in the entirety of the series up to this point, and is shown to obliterate a galaxy, and is even implied to be able to destroy the universe at least over time. We then skip over to Dragon Ball Super and Goku is able to clash with the God of Destruction Beerus and almost destroy the entire the universe of macrocosm many times over. This macrocosm is home to numerous infinitely sized space-time continuums and higher dimensional realms. Goku then absorbs the power he used to perform this feat in his base form and gets millions of times stronger in his mastered ultra instinct form and fights a character that not only surpasses just Beerus but the entire hierarchy of the gods of the destruction themselves. Gogeta is then able to fight a character who can maybe beat Beerus and in their battle are able to break apart the barrier of higher dimensions and distort all space and time universally and Goku would scale to and above this. Goku prior to this was able to shake an infinite space that he would need infinite amounts of reserves of key for. Key like I said is relative to your speed. Goku in the manga mistakes Granola's raw speed for instant transmission, something that is blatantly stated to be instantaneous in movement. This isn't even consistent either, as a character like Cell is implied to be the last character of that level to be caught off guard by a technique like that, and the series would then begin to power cliff the ability. In conclusion, Goku is infinitely sixth dimensional with complex multiversal levels of power and infinite speed. And this is who Sailor Moon has to fight against. However, without the heavy downplay on both sides to even out the playing field. And this isn't even taking into account things like the time chamber that Frieza states is its own space time continuum that Goku was going to annihilate. So the question now is can Sailor Moon beat Goku? In my previous video, I claimed Sailor Moon is upwards of 5th dimensional, scaling off of a character known as Sailor Mercury, who is able to transcend time and space by creating a super dimensional sphere in her most weakest form, in only about the first 7 to 14 chapters of the entire series. However, as I said, this was me downplaying Sailor Moon by many infinite times, and dare I say I was scaling her wrong and incorrectly, and that's not even an exaggeration as in order to scale Sailor Moon properly, you first have to establish where the cosmology truly scales and then prove how she scales to it, which is of course very easy. Sailor Moon's universe, which she transcends by many infinite of times, is a macrocosm. Sailor Moon's universe is stated on many different occasions to go by our laws and knowledge of interstellar space, such as Dragon Ball, going by the theories of relativity, popularized and created by Albert Einstein meaning the basic Sailor Moon galaxy and or universe is already fourth dimensional. However, this would be a huge low ball. Within the Earth, an alternate dimension known as Elysium exists within it that is only able to be reached through a mirror. Mirrors in Sailor Moon are directly stated to have alternate dimensions and universes within them which are far beyond the primary Sailor Moon galaxy and or universe. 
Elysium, which is traveled to by a mirror, is shown to have its own star system. Star systems in Sailor Moon are clear indications of universal size dimensions, with things like the Tau star system being stated to be a universal size construct that exists in a higher dimension, with even a character known as Nehalamia having her own dimensional realm that is again traveled to by a mirror being stated to show and depict many stars and constellations and blackness, again alluding to the idea that it's its own universe. This would make sense since Nehalania was sealed away in her realm, unable to leave. As I said, these realms are beyond the fourth dimensional main universe that they reside in, with characters like Sailor Mars, Mercury, and Rey all being able to destroy their own versions of these mirror universes all within the same arc of the series. This would upscale the main universe as Elysium resides in the Earth and the Earth is a part of the main universe as the original solar system guardians reside in, which all of the other mirror worlds exist in like Nehalania's, Fish Eye and Tiger Eyes, who are the antagonists both Sailor Mars and Mercury beat up in the beginning of the arc, as I said. Meaning, the universe would be 5th dimensional instead of 4th dimensional, since again, transcending space and time would be considered 5th dimensional, since they follow Einstein's physics. The future, or rather history itself in Sailor Moon, is shown to be higher dimensional, or a higher dimensional space-time continuum. This is shown in the second arc of Sailor Moon, as I said previously, who wasn't able to exist there while her future self, Queen Serenity, is alive and exists, and was going to be erased from all of existence, with it being stated that no two people can exist in the same space-time space at the same time. The Black Moon Clan, or specifically Calaveras, are able to send channeled messages from the future into the past, or rather the present. A character known as Yumino then elaborates on this feat and confirms it, stating that in order to send a channeled message through outer space, it would have to come from somewhere like the past. However, in this case, it wouldn't be from the past or present, but rather the future. So in reality, outer space, or the wider cosmology, would not only be higher dimensional, but would be its own space-time continuum, as like I said, Sailor Moon, or rather Yusagi, couldn't even exist in it, but is then able to exist in it and even come into contact with Queen Serenity herself, meaning, at bare minimum, she would be six-dimensional. However, this isn't all. The future, or rather the wider cosmology, is home to the space-time corridor. The space-time corridor is stated to exist outside of the macrocosm, which is outside of the concepts of space and time, and doesn't have the concepts of distance or direction. This is shown when a character known as Sailor Saturn is able to steal away the Tau star system that I mentioned prior, that was able to open up its own space-time corridor and distort all of space and time. In Sailor Moon, distorting space and time is the general indicator of higher dimensionality. This is shown in the second arc when we're introduced to the Black Moon Clan, with the Black Moon itself, or Nemesis, distorting space and time of the present once it's introduced, which is an indicator of its higher dimensional properties because it's from the future and not from the main universe or the present. This shows that the Tau star system also exists in an alternate dimension and is also higher dimensional in scope, and Sailor Saturn was able to not only seal it away but destroy destroy it. The reason why Sailor Saturn is very impressive is due to the fact that in her lore and according to a character known as Sailor Pluto, who has complete dominion over all the space and time in the entire macrocosm, says that upon her introduction in her lore, she was able to destroy the entire macrocosm and even the space-time corridor, which is different than the simple space-time corridor that the Tau star system created as the space-time corridor, or rather the main one, has access to all time and space in the macrocosm, as I said, which is proven when Sailor Saturn is able to use the power of Kronos to seal away the Tau Star Simpson space-time corridor. And Sailor Moon scales infinitely above this via the power of the Silver Crystal, which I'll get into. So the future would actually get another upscale from 6th dimensional to 7th dimensional due to the existence of the corridor that mainly resides in the future and outside the wider cosmology and has access to all space and time its an entirety of the macrocosm. 
Normally, my skepticism would run wild here, mainly agreeing that the verse is around 6D, but disagreeing with the whole 7th dimensional notion and or scaling. However, it is shown many times that if you destroy the wider universe, or rather outer space, all of these space times cease to exist completely, as shown by Sailor Saturn. Like I said, the corridor, which Sailor Moon houses, encompasses all other corridors, like the Tau star systems, which would be higher dimensional because it encompasses the entire universe slash macrocosm and even exists outside of it, devoid and diverged from all concepts of space and time, which would explain why Pluto is able to close higher dimensional universal corridors like the Tau star systems, which as I said is verbatim stated to be universal in size and is stated to exist in a higher dimension. For those who are still a bit confused on why this would be considered a macrocosm, it's because the entire universe, or rather the outer scope of outer space and history itself, is shown to have many multi-layered higher dimensional spaces, such as the future which is its own space-time continuum. We then have places like Elysium that is stated and shown to be an alternate higher dimensional realm within the Earth itself. We also have infinite amounts of mirror realms such as Nehalania, Tiger Eyes, and Fish Eyes, and many more. Furthermore, we have the Tau star system which is able to distort all the space and time, which like I said is a clear indicator of higher dimensional existence in Sailor Moon, that was stated to be universal in size and exist in an alternate dimension. Then in the stars arc or final arc of the series, we then realize that there are countless other infinite sized galaxies with their own multi-dimensional cosmological systems and solar systems and we then get it confirmed that all of these galaxies are infinite in size by Sailor Uranus. So yeah, we have infinitely sized alternate dimensions and realms that are of a higher dimensional space-time continuums like the future. Also, it wouldn't make sense for the Sailor Moon universe to just be universal since it's directly stated that there are interdimensional routes in the universe. So yeah, the universe would be seventh dimensional in terms of cosmological structure or by definition, a macrocosm. For those who are no longer skeptical on the macrocosm itself, but how Sailor Moon scales to it, Sailor Moon's main power source comes from something called the Mythical Silver Crystal. The Mythical Silver Crystal is one of the most powerful sources of power in the entirety of the verse, and is stated on numerous occasions to have infinite and immeasurable power, even up to the Stars Arc or Final Arc of the series. This power allows Sailor Moon to grow in power numerous upon numerous of times, transcending characters like Sailor Pluto, who are blatantly stated to exist before the concept of time was ever created and even sailor saturn who was able to destroy and nuke the main corridor which is devoid of the concepts of space and time and sailor moon would scale infinitely above these characters not only would sailor moon scale infinitely above this but sailor moon created and then destroyed something called the galaxy cauldron the galaxy cauldron created every literal and single thing in the series and or cosmology and this was created and destroyed by eternal sailor moon which is her second strongest form i didn't mention in the earlier sailor moon versus goku video since again i was only using the first 14 chapters or the first arc of the series and was again downplaying being able to create and or destroy the galaxy cauldron is the single-handedly greatest feat in the series because the galaxy cauldron is where everything begins and ends in all of existence the galaxy cauldron which he created holds all possible futures and outcomes that will can won't and possibly will happen and everything in the universe is born and reborn within it as everything is created from something called a star seed or rather its conceptual form as i said everyone is given a star seed star seeds are the source of everything that does doesn't or will exist and possibly can exist all of the sailors powers are from star seeds every aspects of space and time every dimensions and the very concepts of space and time are created from star seeds the cauldron as i said which i can't stress enough dictates all possibilities of everything literally that include things like space time dimensions and again everything 
Every character that has space-time related powers derives from their star seed, which originates from the Mother Cauldron, which Sailor Moon created. Meaning if Sailor Saturn is 70 from being able to destroy the cosmology, then Super Sailor Moon, who scales infinitely above that Saturn, would be on a higher level of 7th dimensional. Eternal Sailor Moon would also be 90 due to her scaling infinitely above the former. The Cauldron would be 8th dimensional as well, at least downplayed, because it created the entire cosmology, and Sailor Moon created it casually and Sailor Cosmos using her Lambda powers would be around 10th dimensional and above since the concepts of space and time are null to her. But I don't know. Maybe Sailor Moon is just galaxy level because, you know, it's called the Galaxy Cauldron. When it comes to speed, initially I had Sailor Moon at infinite speed while being downplayed heavily as seen here, but I think it's just pretty shown that she has a relevant speed, which is a tier speed that is given to a character who transcends the concepts of space and time, with the corridor not having any concepts of space, time, distance, or direction, and she's able to travel in that within the second arc of the series. And Sailor Moon being above that by many infinite times by this point. Meaning, against something like Mastered Ultra Instinct, which really wouldn't matter, because Sailor Moon would be too fast in order for Goku to even remotely move or think before he is hit. Even if we grant Goku something like a measurable speed, which to be honest, he probably does have if you think Goku is above time, which I will leave up to y'all. As for abilities, Sailor Moon is able to reduce a character known as Chaos down to its literal concept. The reason why this is an even better feat than a regular existence erasure beyond the conceptual level is because prior to this, in the first 14 chapters, Sailor Moon was able to banish a character named Metallia. Metallia is stated to have no physical form and to be the concept of evil, but is also stated to be a part of Chaos. This would literally mean that Sailor Moon is fighting a character who blatantly doesn't exist as she banished her in the first arc of the series and is able to destroy the concept of a non-existent character casually so if you think the hakai is the big bad and almighty power of all existence erasure techniques it wouldn't even hold a candle and affect sailor moon even remotely as beyond popular belief the only reason why she's in an internal fight with chaos is because she doesn't have the courage to end it because the consequences and damage were already too great and she was conflicted not because she couldn't beat chaos but because she didn't have the resolve to at least at the time however this video is getting pretty long and while i could give you a billion more hacks of sailor moon and how they would interact with goku i'll just go ahead and answer the question but before that I want to make it clear and I want to make it a little bit more decisive what I meant by the whole existence erasure thing as like I said Batalia is a part of chaos and that piece of chaos is who Sailor Moon banished from all of existence. Chaos would obviously scale above this but would also be independent and separate from existence since already a piece of her who is the literal concept of evil was banished from all of existence meaning as I said Sailor Moon would literally be fighting and reducing the concept of a non-existent character down to its concept if that makes sense however like i said i'll just go ahead and answer the question everyone here is asking can sailor moon beat goku and the answer is yes in conclusion, Dragon Ball's macrocosm is infinitely fifth dimensional with many higher dimensional realms and other infinite realms like heaven, hell, and the living realm, and Goku would scale infinitely above this. Sailor Moon's macrocosm would be infinitely eighth dimensional with many alternate dimensions such as Elysium upscaling the mainline universe from fourth to fifth dimensional, the Tau star system that is in a higher alternate dimensional universe, the future, which is a higher dimensional space time, the corridor, the mirror worlds, and many, many more and Sailor Moon created all of it, deriving from the Galaxy Cauldron. In reality, the fight would start, and Sailor Moon would speed blitz infinitely times over and erase Goku and banish him from all of existence casually, like she did to Metallia. However, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. A lot of time and effort was put into it. It took many more hours of research for not only Dragon Ball, which I had to reread, but Sailor Moon, which I had to finish the series for. Specifically for this video, in order to scale both characters at their peaks, without the downplay I had limited to earlier in my initial video. I know many people will be asking about things like the other abilities or maybe other forms. However, I wanted to keep it pretty simple and use the bare bones scaling for each characters. 
Plus, I think a much closer fight would be someone like Zeno Goku or CC Goku versus Eternal Sailor Moon or Sailor Cosmos. However, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and a subscription as it would truly mean a lot. And with that being said, till next time.